Coach Candrea, welcome. Um, it's so good to see your Thank face. You. Um, so good to see you. What are you doing these days? What am I doing? Well, you know what? I'm enjoying retirement, uh, semi-retirement. I'm working still as an advisor for the athletic director here at, at the university and doing some coach mentoring and, um, you know, getting a chance to see some teams practice and play that I had never seen for 37 years that I've been here because I was in my own little submarine. Um, where have you seen, you know, the last obviously 50, but specifically 40 years of growth? In female sports. Wow. I mean, I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for Title IX and, and the opportunities that I got. And I remember when I first got into the game, it was that was one of the reasons, you know, George Young, four time Olympian, you know, our AD said, Mike, I, I, I want you to coach the women's softball team. And I'm going, George, I'm a good baseball guy. Why do, why do I want to coach women? And he started talking about Title IX and the and the influence it's going to have on opportunities for female athletes. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is pretty neat. You know, I'm an assistant coach, so I might as well take a chance to see what I can do. And, and you start seeing it. I think softball has been so fun to watch the growth of, of it and the um, opportunities that our women have gotten, because I look back at Omaha when it first, the, 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 um, World Series was there. It was not much. Then I remember going to um, Sunnyvale, California. Yeah. You know, and I waited for the beer league to get off the field before we could play our World Series. You know, I'm thinking, oh my God. You know, and then we get to Oklahoma City and, and we're going, wow, this could be special. And, you know, there was one game on television, final game, and luckily we got to that point. But then you watched it grow. I mean, it was like a the lint ball that was being rolled and just collecting, you know, as we went and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I've been able to live through all that. So that that's probably the thing I'm most proud of, you know, is I've been able to actually live through the, the history of, of women's athletics and, and softball. How and cool is that? And the CU. Yeah. I mean, I, you think about it. I remember being in high school and you know what I don't remember is all I remember is cheerleaders and pom-pom girls. I did not remember any women that were athletes. Yeah, and I'm not that old. I mean, I'm talking in the 70s, 73, 72, 60s, late 60s. And to me, that's what's changed so much now is that, man, they're on a level playing field. Some of the best leaders I see in this world are, are female. Something that always stuck out from you, and there's so many things, but I remember you always talking about the difference of coaching men versus women. Yeah. And you said that men have to play good to feel good. Women have to feel good to play good. Can you kind of get into like how you would try to help players remember to enjoy the game, remember to feel good so that they could go and then perform? When I grew up, it was, yeah, it was go out and get a wiffle ball, meet all the kids at the end of the street, we used to mow this pasture out in, in Louisiana and we made our own field. And man, that was where you spent your time, you know, from sun up to sundown until you had to go home, you had a glove and a ball in your hand and a bat in your hand, and, but it was just playing, you know, no one cared. Yeah. We kept score, but no one really cared at the end of the day, whether I went three for three or over three, you know, I was with my buddies. Yeah. And I think I, I think you have to try to bring that to the game sometimes is that this game is not life threatening. How do you work with players? How did you work with players on failure recovery? Well, I think it's something that you have to talk about and it's something that you you make part of the the package. I mean, if you're going to play softball, then you're going to have to learn how to handle failure because the best hitters get a hit three out of 10 times. So 70 percent of the time you're going to fail in this sport. So let's Let's, let's make that a known and let's have a plan when failure happens so that you don't spiral down into feeling that it's all about you. You, you don't take the game personal. Communication begins from the bottom up, not the top down. You know, it's absolutely most important that you can make kids feel good that they can walk in your office and talk. When I think about postseasons coming up, a lot of coaches, a lot of players, 
trying to navigate, you know, this time of year, elimination, it's totally different. How did that database of experience translate into the postseason? Don't change anything. I think too many times people want to do more, you know, when they get into those situations. And and I learned from the Olympic Games is it's just the the stress that's put upon athletes by friends and family that you don't have to worry about. You know, you get to the World Series, everyone wants to go, you know, and everyone wants a piece of you. And then you're doing things that you're not quite used to doing. So trying to keep your normal routine, I think, is is huge. But I think at the end of the day, it's trust. When I got into softball and I started coaching the female athlete, the one thing I saw was this mound of clay that was absolutely um, untouched. There was no habits. There were no bad habits. There were no expectations. There were just sponges. They, you know, if you taught them something that made them a little bit better, boy, they got super excited. They got super motivated. You know, they got confident. And um, that was the fun part about it. You know, I, I, I think the sky's the limit. I think we're just beginning to where we can be. And um, I, now that I, now I see it kind of coming into college sports. I mean, I think they're talking now about, you know, some of the inequities we've had, you know, crazy stuff. It's going to get corrected very quickly. Why? Because I think there's the power is in the female right now, you know, and, and, and that they just need an opportunity. Yep. And I, I, I look at, you know, our coaches right now, I'm going, that's all they needed. Thank you for being a part of that change because you were, Thank and there have been thousands of women that have been affected, whether it was the women you coached, the daughters that they had clearly now going on for more sports, it just keeps paying for it. So we are well, grateful and it's an honor. grateful, grateful. It's an honor and, and it's um, having moments like this with people like you that really make me appreciate my, my opportunities that I've gotten um, in this game. 